Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Jason Bent, welcome back to the channel. This week I'm gonna be talking about tools. And I often get asked like what some of the, you know, common items that I use in the shop are, uh, things that I couldn't live without basically. And so what I've done is I've, I've compiled about 15 different items of things that are very important to me in my shop and my workflow. And I'm gonna briefly talk about each one of those uh, and share with you a little bit why each one of those tools is so important to me and my shop. So let's jump right in with the first item. The first item is the Woodpecker's uh, Polini Pocket Rule, and they sell these in a set. Um, this is definitely hands down the one that I use the most. This is the six inch one. However, all of the uh, Woodpecker's Polini rulers that I have are actually both metric and imperial, seeing as how I use both in my shop, uh, metric primarily but this is used more than any other measuring device in my shop next to maybe the tape measure. The thing that I like about this so much is one, it's small, two, it's very easy to use, and it has a lot of different purposes. Uh, it's adjustable. I can use this to check depth on different things. It's great for me just to pull out if I you know, make a mark and I need to you know, extend the line really quick uh, because I can butt it up against the edge. It's just a really, really good, measuring device. A lot of people who've been following me for a while know that I used to use the Incra Tiny T a lot, which I still do use. Uh, I've got it right here and I still use it a lot, uh, but this has definitely become my go-to measuring and marking device. Now, since the first item I was talking about uh, had to do with woodpeckers, I'm gonna show you the other uh, tools that I use from woodpeckers a lot, uh, but these are two things that I absolutely would not want to be without. And these are the TS rulers. And this one right here is a TS 600, it is the metric version. And this one right here is a TS 12, which is obviously the imperial version. Now, the thing that's great about these is the metric version is in one millimeter increments and the imperial version is in 16th of an inch increments. So you really have the ability to mark just about anything you want. Where I use these the most is when I'm dealing with cabinetry related things. Um, and even when I'm laying out drawer slides, these can actually be very handy because there's something about these that a lot of people don't know and don't consider. On the metric version, each one of these holes is actually spaced 32 millimeters. On the imperial version, they're spaced exactly an inch apart. So you can use these for shelf pin holes, you can use them for drawer slide layout. Uh, the metric one serves a little bit better for drawer slide layout, but these are both two indispensable measuring devices in my shop. Now, continuing down the path of measuring, I'll talk about the last measuring devices, and that is the fast cap tape measures. Um, and I've got a ton of these laying around the shop. The yellow one that you see here is both a metric and imperial version, and the blue one is just a metric version, and it is on the true 32 scale. Now, with that being said, both of these have indications and markings for every 32 millimeters. But for me, somebody who you know deals with uh, cabinetry projects a lot in my own shop, uh, this one's very, very handy. But if you're somebody that's looking for one that has both, then the yellow option is a great way to go. These are relatively inexpensive and they're available at just about any you know, woodworking supply store, Amazon. Um, these are 16 feet long. They have you know, belt clips on them. You can sharpen your pencils on them. They're just really, really good tape measures. Uh, I've had a lot of luck, so I bought a bunch of them and just keep them throughout my shop. Believe it or not, this is one of the most common questions I get is what tape measure I use. Um, and this isn't anything special. It's what a lot of people use. Uh, but fast cap tape measures, they're really, really nice. So the next items I wanna talk about are clamping. And one of the most common questions I get is what clamps do I use the most? What clamps are best for whatever? To me, without question, the most common clamp I reach for in my shop is a parallel clamp. Uh, these are the ones from Bessie. They're the K-Body Revo clamps. I use them any opportunity I get. They're a little bit heavier, they're a little bit bigger, they're a little bit bulkier, but I just feel like these clamps in general are just great for so many applications. The other thing that makes them really, really great, in my opinion, is that you can get these extenders for them and you can hook two separate clamps together to give you a longer length. Now, I actually owned these Bessie clamps for a very long time, and then I ran into a scenario where I needed a very long one. And my immediate reaction was, I was gonna go out and buy one of the really, really long parallel clamps or a couple of them, and they are extremely expensive. So what I can do with this is I can take a couple of 24 inch clamps, I can take a 50 and a 24, I can take two 50s, and I can attach them together, and I can clamp just like I would if it was a single clamp. These are invaluable, and anytime I ever need these, it's worth every single penny because it is so much less expensive than actually buying one of the really long clamps. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about when it comes to clamping is also an accessory that goes with the Bessie parallel clamps, and that is these 
movable jaws. As you can see here, it actually pivots. And I wanna say it's a 15 degree capability, uh, but the reason why these are so helpful is because if I'm using, if I'm gluing something up with angles, I can attach these jaws to it and it won't slip because of the material that's on here. And as I go to tighten this down, it applies the pressure evenly, but doesn't require me to add any blocks or anything like that. These just work really well. And any angles that I do for the most part have always been less than the 15 degree mark. So these work really good for that. And I've had really good experiences with this. And this is again, something I've started to deal with a little bit more angles in my furniture, just because I wanna start, you know, branching out a little bit and not doing everything in a perfect 90. And so getting these has just saved me a ton of time because I don't have to worry about, you know, adding any blocks or cutting opposing pieces to get even clamping pressure and finding a way to attach them and clean up. I just don't have to do that. As long as it's a 15 degree angle or less, which in almost every case, this is really, really good for me and my shop. Now, the next item is gonna be something that might seem a little bit uh, silly, but it's self-centering drill bits. And for the longest time, I always thought that self-centering drill bits weren't really needed until I started doing a lot more with cabinetry and hinges and drawer slides and everything else. Having self-centering drill bits has been a humongous, humongous help. So again, I know that this is kind of like a, a duh, but I actually went a very long time without owning any self-centering drill bits. And I would always run into little issues. I was off a little bit here and there because you know, the, the bit wasn't self-centering. So now that I have these, I use them for a multitude of things. Um, but when it comes to cabinetry, uh, these things are worth their weight in gold. The next item is another simple small item and that is an eighth inch roundover bit. This is a quarter inch shank and the reason why this is so crucial and beneficial to me is because I always love to break the edges up a little bit and I find that an eighth inch roundover and in some cases even like a 16th inch roundover is just enough for that nice subtle look. This one right here is probably the most used. Now in line with the router bit comes a router. Now I have various routers in my shop. I've got a couple of different festival routers. I've got a Bosch router in my router table. And without question, the router that I use the most is a palm router. This is a DeWalt palm router, a DWP611. This is the corded version, obviously. This right here gets used on almost every project that I do, and it gets used way more than anything else in my shop. Now, the benefit to this is one, it's small, it's compact, it's lightweight, but this you can also buy with a plunge base setup, and that plunge base setup comes in really handy, especially when you're trying to do small things. It's not always the greatest idea to be using a really large router to do delicate work, so that's why I find this to be very useful um, and I would absolutely be lost without a palm router like this in my shop. All right, the next tool I'm gonna talk about is, it's the tool I never knew that I needed or never thought that I would have a use for it, but now that I have it, I try to find every single reason to use it, and it solves a problem for me all the time, and that is a multi-tool. And yes, this is a Festool one. I'm just talking about the multi-tool in general. This tool, especially in the home renovation side, not as much in the shop. However, I do use it quite a bit uh, when I'm doing CNC work because it's easy to just cut the tabs away with this. So if you're doing CNC work, a multi-tool is a really, really nice thing to have uh, because you can cut your pieces out very quickly. But when I'm doing a lot of the home renovation stuff, that's where this thing really, really shines. Um, and it's just anytime I'm like, how can I do this? The multi-tool is the thing that is going to do it for me and do it very quickly. And it, it's just a really great tool to have. And this is definitely something, now that I have one, I would absolutely not wanna be without. The next thing is a good set of setup blocks. I've had various different versions of setup blocks for different things, whether it's the bandsaw, the table saw, the router table, whatever it is. And then I was able to finally get my hands on one of these complete sets. And I bought this from iGaging. I actually purchased it from Pentool. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about this, where I was able to find this, because this is actually a metric set. And it just comes in a variety of different sizes. One, two, three, four, five, six, six point five, seven, eight, ten, twelve and a half, sixteen, nineteen, twenty, 12 16, 19, 20, and then 25, 50, 75. So um, they do sell this in an imperial version as well. And woodpeckers actually used to sell one of these. I think it was a one-time tool. And I always wanted to get my hands on them, but these eye gauging ones are far less expensive. And guess what? They're blocks of aluminum. So they do exactly what I need them to do. And these have a 
variety of uses, whether it's trying to set up a bandsaw, whether it's trying to set the depth of cut on a router, uh, router table, the table saw, they just really come in handy for a lot of things. Even if you're just trying to, you know, test the width of something, a cut that you made, having a good set of setup blocks is a really, really good investment. So the next thing has to do with organization. And in my opinion, organization is a tool just like anything else in the shop. And I struggle with organization a bit. Um, at least I think I do. A lot of people think that I'm like some super crazy neat freak that is super organized, but I assure you that's not the case. Everything just looks good on the camera, right? But something that's really helped my organization is these sortainers. And there, there's various companies that make you know, similar things to this. These are the festival ones, obviously, but I've actually managed to get the majority of items that I would typically like have in a toolbox all right here in a couple of sustainers. I have two on this side and I've got two on the other side of my miter saw station and they hold everything from drill bits to screws to fasteners. I mean, I mean you name it, uh, wrenches, screwdrivers. I mean, everything. They are all within these sortainers and I'm able to easily reference what's in them because they're all labeled. So if you're somebody that's like super serious about organization, definitely take a look at some sort of container like that because it can really up your organizational abilities. Now, the next two things I'm gonna show you go into the culminating item, which I don't think it'll be a surprise once we get there. Uh, but for me, it is a guide rail square. The guide rail square is absolutely fantastic when I need to make quick 90 degree cuts and I don't want to you know, get everything set up on my assembly table. If, if you watched my last video, you'll see that I have this cross cut station and that's great when I'm making multiple cuts. It's not always something that I wanna do when I'm just making one cut. And so that's when I will grab this and I grab this a lot. I did a comparison video on this, uh, comparing it to three other brands on the market. If you guys wanna check that out, I'll leave a, a link down in the video description, but uh, the TSO has been my favorite and it's a dream to use and it's a pleasure to work with. Parallel guides. And I also did a comparison video comparing different parallel guides. Again, I'll leave a link to that video down in the description as well if you wanna find out more about it. But to me, a really good set of parallel guides is invaluable. Now, with these, it's a very similar situation to the guide rail square. I'm not using it every time. But where it really shines is when you have to make multiple cuts. If I'm breaking down multiple sheets of plywood and I'm doing various rips, I can set these and just make all of my cuts very quickly. I don't have to measure anything. And that's where these really come in handy. And once you get them dialed in, they're dead on and you know you can trust them. So for me, with what I do in my shop and what I primarily focus on, again, these are invaluable. And now I'm sure you could guess it by the last two items that I did, but the last item for me is a track saw. And a track saw is, in my opinion, one of the most versatile tools in the shop. I think it's capable of so much more than people give it credit for. But if you're, if you're somebody that's using a lot of sheet goods, I mean, period. If you're somebody that's using a lot of sheet goods or doing cabinetry or something like that, a track saw is such an amazing tool to have. Where I think the track saw has the biggest benefit is you're bringing the tool to the wood as opposed to bringing the wood to the tool. So for me, I do a lot of stuff with plywood and sheet goods and long materials in some cases. I mean, even jointing boards. I will use a track saw to joint the edge of one board. Why? Because I get better results by laying a track on that board and cutting a straight line versus taking this really long thing and having it hang off the edge of the jointer and then it's just following the curvature of the board and you end up wasting a bunch of material. I mean, I could go on for days. So for me, one of the most crucial tools in my shop and I think it is a excellent addition to anybody's shop is a track saw period. Okay, so that was 15 different items that I have in my shop. And this is not an all encompassing list. It's just when I started to think about what things do I use on a daily basis that I think are very crucial to me in my shop, these were the things that came to mind. And that's probably because they're the things that have made the biggest impact for me. If you guys enjoy this video and you wanna see more videos like this, leave it down in the comments section below. Or maybe if there's some tools that you disagree with, or maybe some tools that I didn't think about, Leave it down in the comments section. I would love to know what some of those tools that you guys could not live without are. That is going to do it for this video. If you guys want to find out more about me, head over to bentswoodworking.com. Until next time, everybody, get out in the shop, try something new, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.